Hello, my dear Chutku people. I welcome you all to mock test five of our NEET Premier League, and I hope that these mock tests are being really helpful for you guys. And I hope that you have solved it already, and now you have come to watch. Please, please make it a habit to solve things and then watch this particular video, because if you're just relying on me. uh solving the questions and letting you know the answer that won't be really useful for you so please 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 follow that particular thing you have to try for yourself and then only come to me okay now let's see who all got who all uh, which all chutkus got the answers correct yeah first question a color blind man this was the homework that i gave you okay a color blind man marries a woman with normal sight okay color blind man so color blind man will always have this particular genotype because you know it is a blind color blindness is a sex linked recessive trait and male just have one x chromosome so that x chromosome if that person is color blind then definitely he will be having this particular genotype this will this x chromosome will be affected he is marrying a woman with normal sight who has no history of color blindness in her family okay what is the probability of their grandson being color blind it is a very long thing so i think i have to shift it a bit up so i'll shift it a bit up over here i have x c y and she is x x because she does not have any history of color blindness now we have to talk about grandson okay so this and this fuses you get x x c this and this fuse fuses you get x x c okay now this and this fuse you get x y similarly this and this fuse you get x y okay they both are carriers the females are carriers if you talk about male both of them they are normal agree now what is the probability of their grandson being color blind that is the question now if you want a grandson again let's fuse the female first first condition i fuse the female with a normal man okay grandson so basically let's fuse this with this so i get x c y okay if i fuse this with this i get x y if i fuse this with this i get x x c if i fuse this with this i get x x so out of four i find the male grandson this is a son but he is normal if you talk about this son this son has a disease because there is only one x and this x there is no one to overshadow the effect of this particular x so 25% or basically can i say 0.25% of the male the grandson chance is there that it has the disease it has the disease so this is the possibility that is given over here okay now uh, what is the probability of the grandson being color blind this is the probability children 0.25% 0.25 0.25 all of them are normal there on the other hand if we talk about so there is a male from here and there is a female then all of them will be normal so there in that case there is no probability of anyone having color blindness but over here there is there is a chance of them being color blind so this chance we cannot avoid all of them might be normal that's fine but over here when i fuse one of this and normal parent i get this so i they cannot avoid this which is why this is the answer please don't write that okay when this fuses with another female then obviously there is no one getting so how can you write this but still if the female is fusing with another male then still you have this chance so how can you avoid it which is why it is 0.25 this came in 2015 hmm going ahead hemophilia is more commonly seen in human males than in human females okay hemophilia is seen again this is a x linked uh, recessive disorder so in the case of females females if they need to have this disease then uh, okay in this case they are just a carrier in this case they are just the carrier in this case they have the disease where both the genes are affected with both the chromosomes are affected then probably they have the disease okay but in the case of males if even one x chromosome is affected and the one is having y so in normally over here 
the, there is one normal female, a normal uh, chromosome in the female, this will overshadow the effect of this. Since this is a recessive one, it won't show its effect if a dominant uh, normal allele is present. So, it won't be showing the effect and this particular person will be a carrier. Now, over here there was no one to dominate. Over here also you do not have anyone to dominate which is why this particular male will definitely be what? Diseased. This particular male will definitely be diseased. So, you are increasing the chance right over here. There is a chance that females can be just carriers. There is a chance that female can have diseases. But for males, for males, most of the times they will be disease itself. So, why is it that so? A greater population of girls die in infancy? No. The disease is due to Y-linked recessive mutation? No. This disease is due to X-linked recessive mutation. This disease is due to X-linked dominant mutation. Children, this is due to X-linked recessive mutation, which is why if you have a dominant allele on the other hand, this particular female would not be having this disease as it would overshadow the effect of this. Whereas in this recessive condition, just like in males, it will be a disease condition. Okay, so this is the answer for the second question. This came in NEAT 2005. Going ahead, a woman with normal vision but whose father was colorblind. So, again, father has colorblind, so it has to be XY. Okay, the woman has normal vision, fine, but the woman definitely will be a carrier because woman will be having X from this father only. So, anyway, she has to be a carrier for sure. What I am trying to say, are you understanding this? No? Listen, in the case of gamete formation, there will be one X, one, one Y. If the father is giving X and the mother is also giving X, that's when you get a female child. So, if the father is giving X, this X will be having C, that is the mutated gene. Anyways, that is obviously there. So, the female, whoever is produced, if the mother is normal, then it has a normal X, but the father's X chromosome will be problematic, right? And hence, this particular person will be a carrier. It is written that this woman has normal vision because she is a carrier. She does not have the disease. She is just a carrier. Now, the thing is, a woman with normal vision but whose father was colorblind marries a, marries a colorblind man. Now, again, marries a color blind man color blind man again as i said is a recessive disease so this has to be the condition if there was a dominant trait then this particular person would not have been color blind since there is only one gene and this is recessive gene which is why you have the disease so this is a color blind man and this is a carrier female now what is the question suppose that the fourth child of this couple was a boy this boy will have what chalo let's solve so this and this, I get XXC carrier female. Okay. This and this, I get XY normal male. This and this, I get XCXC diseased female. Now, there is one, no one to dominate. This is a recessive condition. So, anyways, this particular female will be diseased. This and this, XCY. Again, this particular guy will be diseased because the X is not normal just like this. So, this was normal. This was also a carrier. This particular female was a carrier. This particular female is diseased and this particular male is also diseased. So, you are talking about the fourth child, right? So, this boy may be color blind or may be of normal vision. So, this boy, this fourth boy can be this or this. Either way, they are both boys. Now, they can be either normal or they can be children colorblind. That is the first option and that is the first answer itself. Okay. There is a maybe colorblind. Okay. Like them or may not be or or maybe having what normal vision like them. So, these are tricky tricky questions but it's very interesting. You don't need to put too much of your brain in there if you try to write it and then understand. A woman with normal vision but whose father was colorblind. So, obviously father always contributes the X gene. So, X chromosome. So, this has to be like this only. She has to be a carrier if she has, she has a normal vision. So, if you are messing up here, you will mess up here also. So, please be very sure with that. So, this is A. The correct answer is A. Okay. Going ahead. Of a normal couple, half the sons are hemophilic. Philic. I don't feel like okay while half the daughters are carriers the gene is located on so of a normal couple half the sons are hemophilic okay while half the daughters are carriers the gene is located on okay 
let's see you have xx and xy and with this condition they are saying that half the sun whoever will be there are hemophilic so the condition is like this okay and if they are saying normal couple and they are saying half of them only half of males will be produced rest half will be females only that is the thing okay when you have this chance x and x fuses with x you have a female child x again xx you have a female child x and y again a male child x and y again a male child so 50% of chance it will be male it 50% of chance it will be female so both of them 50 50 both of them 25 25 are basically having hemophilia okay and half of the, them are carriers that means what children that means what tell me tell me tell me tell me okay wait 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 i did a small mistake okay i'll repair that mistake half of the sons as in if you have two sons one among them will be having this particular disease now it's all fine and they said half of the females will be the carriers uh, what so you want to take the video no then i just came to hey, this hey, video. Uh, because you said don't this thing actually yeah, yeah. why you i took I, you can take the video as well then one video if you want to edit if you don't want, Which you want video? Eh? the one i shooted earlier uh, tomorrow's video you want to edit it tomorrow yes i have already edited no today's video you have edited no oh, oh, oh. okay then i'll upload it then stop 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 pause <laughs> Cut, cut. You, just a second. Okay, now let's do the fourth question. Of a normal couple, half the sons are hemophiliac, while half the daughters are carriers. The gene is located on. Hmm. Very great information, but we still need to find out. So. They are saying there's a normal couple. So let's assume they are normal couples. Okay, children? And they are saying that half the sons are hemophilia. So let's just normally make the number of sons and daughters. Okay? So when this and this fuses, you get X and X. When this and this fu fuses, you get X and Y. Okay? Now when this and this fuses, you get X and X. When this and this fuses, you get X and Y. And with the condition that they have given, that is half the sons are hemophiliac. If half the sons, that is you have two sons, and if half as in one son is hemophiliac, then I can write one X over here. Okay, this particular son is hemophiliac. Okay, and it is also written that, 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 that half the daughters are carrier. Now, if I make the doctor, daughter, not doctor, as carrier, okay. She is a carrier, right? If there was two of CC over here, then it has to be disease. But she is a carrier. So in that condition, the genes is located on what genes? The affected genes is located on what children? Basically, if this has to be the condition, then this X should be coming from the mother. Over here also, this X should be coming from the mother. So if I make like this, still the couple is normal only because she is still a carrier. She is not diseased. She is still a carrier, she is not diseased and this is a normal man. So in this case, the gene is located on one X chromosome of the mother. This is the answer, 1993 question, okay? I hope you understood this. Going ahead, in which of the following diseases the man has an extra X chromosome? XXY. This is man's normal chromosome. You have one extra, that is total 47 chromosomes will be there. Usually we have 46 number of chromosomes occurring in 23 pairs. Okay, but over here you have one more extra X chromosome. This occurs in Klein-Felter syndrome, children. This came in 1996. Okay, now Down syndrome is due to what? Non-disjunction of, I told the answer. Okay, first thing, crossing over. 
tossing over as and when crossover happens and things like that. Linkage when they are closely linked, okay, the genes are closely linked. Sex linked inheritance, no. no not disjunction of chromosomes as in when the chromosomes are there, but they are not separated, okay, properly in a way. Okay, this is known as non disjunction of chromosome. And Down syndrome happens due to this particular reason only. Because from one particular parent, you should get one chromosome. And here also you should be getting one chromosome. But what is happening from one particular parent, you are getting one chromosome. But from the other parent, you are getting two chromosomes. So the chromosome which has to be away are not together. So you have three chromosomes in total. And this three, three, three chromosomes are the 21st chromosome. So you have three 21st chromosomes, one from one parent, two from other parent. Okay, you have three 21st chromosomes. This is known as trisomy trisomy of 21st chromosome and this is because of this question number six going ahead both husband and wife have normal vision through their fathers yo though their fathers were color blind blind okay both husband and wife have normal vision though their fathers were color blind so let's make father is color blind okay and they are saying that husband and wife both are having normal vision. So if husband has to have normal vision, okay, forget about wife, wife as of now. But if husband has to have normal vision, that means both the X chromosomes has to be normal. Because, listen, children. Both have wife and normal vision, though they're fathers. Okay, so over here, this is XY, this is also XY. For having normal vision, your both X chromosome should not have anything. Should be normal, completely normal, no carrier, nothing, okay? The probability of their daughter becoming color blind is what? So, this guy, uh, this is a husband, so he is completely normal, okay? But when you talk about the females, okay? But when you talk about the female, the case will be like this, okay, where there is one X chromosome, for the father is color blind, it said no. So the woman's father is color blind, so let's make it the woman over here. So for being woman over here, we need XC and X here also, XC and X. When XX chromosome come, that's when you say it's a female. So this is the female and this is the male. So, husband and wife are having normal vision, but actual, in actual case, the wife is basically a carrier children. The wife is basically a carrier. So, you don't need to do all this thing. You don't need to do all this drama. You can just understand from the given statement, both husband, if the husband is normal, is having normal vision, that means there are no CC on the X chromosome. It has to be like this only. It's, so, this particular person has to have a uh, proper X and Y chromosome without any disorders in it. Okay, if X chromosome had any disorder, then this, had, this, this person would have been having color blindness. And if you're talking about wife also, wife is also having normal vision. Okay, even though the fathers were color blind, that cannot be possible because wife will always re receive one X from the father. So that means the wife will be X, XC and the man will be XY. Now you're asking about the probability of the daughter becoming color blind. You're not talking about the carrier, you're talking about color blindness. You tell me. For being a daughter, you need to cross this and this, you get XX, normal. You cross this and this. Again, this is carrier. This is normal. No one, no, none of the daughters are having the disease, which is why it is 0%. This came in 1990. Okay? Try to solve by yourself and use your brain rather than using the whole time there. Okay? Now, in human beings, 45 chromosomes single, X, XO, abnormality causes what? So, when you have, okay, 45 chromosomes, that means usually we have 46 chromosome, one chromosome is missing and they have mentioned x o as well so basically one sex chromosome is there another sex chromosome is not there and this happens in turner syndrome where it's a female it's a female because you have the x chromosome right it's a female since you have the x chromosome okay and it's 45 because you do not have any chromosome over here 
there is only one chromosome plus two chromosomes went on the other side that person will be having Klinefelter but over here this person does not have the other chromosome okay. So this is the condition this is known as Turner syndrome where there is a female with masculine character and it will be sterile as well. <sighs> Sickle cell anemia is caused by what children? Caused by substitution of valine by glutamic acid? No, I studied this thing. GUG, okay, initially it was GAG, A comes before G, right? Sorry, A comes before U, then later on it gets converted to GUG, there is a there is a change or mutation in one base pair, which is why initially it was coding for glutamic acid, but now it is coding for valine children, that's another amino acid. So the whole protein chain becomes changed. So amino acids basically they come together to form the protein. If one amino acid changes, the whole protein structure changes. So this protein structure changes what? What is the protein that is being formed by the normal synthesis? Beta hemoglobin is being formed. So in hemoglobin you have two chains, alpha hemoglobin chain and beta hemoglobin chain. Over here because of this mutation happening, beta hemoglobin chain is being altered. There is abnormal beta hemoglobin chain being formed, okay. Now sickle cell anemia is caused by substitution of valine by glutamic acid, no, opposite. Glutamic acid is substituted by valine, G comes before V, okay. Caused by change in single base pair, yes. Okay, characterized by elongated sickle like RBCs with nucleus, RBCs does not have nucleus. An autosomal linked dominant trait, it is autosomal linked recessive trait. So this is the answer, single base pair change over here, okay. Tenth question, a disease caused by an autosomal primary non-disjunction is, autosomal primary, okay. So listen, Klinefenters and Turners, they are both sex linked. It's with the sex chromosome. But over here, Down syndrome, if you talk, it's about the 21st chromosome and 21st chromosome has to be an autosome. Remember, in the in the numbering of 23 chromosomes, 22 of them children, they are autosomes which are responsible for our normal physical characters, whereas the 23rd one is allosome, which is responsible, allosome, which is responsible for the sex of the organism. Okay? And... Down syndrome is the one which is in which 21st chromosome which is an autosome which comes in this particular category is affected whereas in Klinefenters and Turner sex linked uh, sex chromosomes are affected and sickle cell anemia there also it is an autosomal disease but it is not because of primary disjunction and all okay it is a cause because of gene abnormalities so it's not chromosomal it's a Mendelian disorder so this is wrong this is right Down syndrome is the correct answer. Okay, need 2017 question. 11, number of bar bodies in XXX female is, so listen to me very carefully. Okay, if female has XX chromosome, what happens is that one X chromosome is enough and it becomes active, the other X chromosome is in the form of bar body, body which is visible in the nucleus and the form of small dots. Okay, so just one is there, so that means in normal females, how do you identify, this is done in amniocentesis. In amniocentesis, you, how do you find the sex of the child? Basically, if in the nucleus there is bar bodies present, you understand that this is a female because one X chromosome always present like this. Whereas you are XY, you just have one X chromosome, so that cannot be converted into bar body. So you won't have, males do not have any bar body. So in this condition where there is X, 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 you just need one X, rest three of them basically will be converted to bar bodies. So answer is three, this came in 2001, okay? This is the 11th question. Going ahead, in Drosophila, the XXY condition leads to femaleness, okay? Whereas, so XXY in Drosophila is leading to femaleness as in okay whereas in human beings the same condition xxy is leading to klein felters syndrome fine in male so you know it's forming a male it proves what according to me it proves that y does not have anything to do with uh, the organism to become a male in the case of Drosophila, whereas here if Y is there, then obviously it will be a male. Here as, is, as I said, Y is there still showing femaleness, the Y does not play any role over here. But over here, since Y is there, that person is a male. 
So, in human beings, Y chromosome is the one that will be responsible for sex determination. Okay, so in human beings, Y chromosome is active in sex determination. Y chromosome is active in sex determination in both human beings and Drosophila, no children. In Drosophila, Y chromosome decides the femaleness, no children. Y chromosome of male, of man, have genes for syndrome, no children. This is the correct answer. Okay, bit complicated, but yeah, 2000 question. Okay, going ahead. Mongolian idiocy due to trisomy in 21st chromosome is called, you know, 21st chromosome trisomy and I said mental retardation is there, which is also known as Mongolian idiocy. It's basically Down syndrome. You know the answer. Came in 2000. Going ahead. A male human is heterozygous for autosomal genes A and B and is hemizygous for hemophilic gene H. What proportion of this, his sperms will be ABH? Okay. Let's break this down. A male human is heterozygous for autosomal genes, as in it is autosomal genes and it is heterozygous. So A and small a, B and small b. Heterozygous. If it was A and capital A, then it would have been homozygous. So this is heterozygous. Now, it is hemizygous for hemophilic gene. Hemizygous as in there is only one chromosome that will be having this particular thing. So it is hemizygous. Okay, that is small h. Now, what proportion of his sperms will be A, B, H? So, let's make the gametes. Okay, let's make the gamete. Okay, so over here, it can be either A pairing with B. Okay, from here A can come, from here B can come, from here let's say X, H can come. Okay, next thing. From here A can come, from here small B can come, from here again X, H can come. Okay, these are two possibilities. Now, from here A can come, from here B can come, from here Y can come. Similarly, A can come, small b can come and Y can come. Four, done. Now, let's start with the other one. Here A can come, capital B can come, XH can come. Similarly, A can come, small b can come and XH can come. Okay, next, A can come, capital B can come, Y can come. Next, A can come. Cap, um, small b can come and y can come. Okay, so how many of them we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have 8 of them and you are asked about which one, which will be the ones which has a, b, h. So this is the a, b, h one. So a, b, h, x, h is the same thing as h. Okay, so 1 among 8, 1 by 8 is the correct answer, children. These are small terms you need to understand. So, hemophilia, as you know, there will be one, cro one uh, chromosome only which will be carrying this. This is hemizygous condition. This is heterozygous condition. If you are not aware of this, hmm. as I said, this is a pair of chromosome, this is another pair of chromosome, this is another pair of chromosome, this is another pair. So, from each, a pair will come down. Each, a number of if a number of chromosome will be coming down, this, this, this in a gamete, okay? So, you are asking and gamete is basically sperm only. So, you are asked about the same thing only, okay? Question number 14, I hope it's done, 2004 question. Now, the 15th question, a man and a woman who do not show any apparent signs of a certain inherited disease have seven children, okay? Two daughters and five sons. Three of the sons suffer from the given disease, but none of the daughters affected. Which of the following mode of inheritance do you suggest for this particular disease? Whenever you see this, that sons are basically affected and daughters are not showing the character, probably there are chances that you're talking about sex-linked recessive diseases over here. Okay? So, how can you come to find out? Basically, it said that the man and the woman, they do not have the disease. So, I am writing XY, normal man. Okay? But when you talk about woman, woman probably is a carrier of this particular disease which is why there are chances that when x and x fuses you get xx normal when x and y fuses you get xy okay this son and this daughter is safe now this daughter is a carrier children but still normal this son if you see again is having the disease so if you see the son is normal the son is having disease so if is in this condition where you have seven children in total and 
five sons are there and uh, two daughters are there three of the sons are suffering from the disease but none of the daughters are affected because daughters anyway whatever you do will be just carriers so there is no chances that they will be affected either they can be normal or they can be carrier they would not be having that disease but when you talk about sons some of them will have the disease whereas others won't which is why i say it's sex linked recessive disease that you see over here this is a 15th question let's go to the next one 16th question how many different types of genetically different gametes will be produced by heterozygous plant having the genotypes aa bb and cc will you keep on calculating the number of gametes children i have a trick for you then so when homozygous you don't calculate them when there is heterozygous so there are two of them so put two as a number and there are two of them which are heterozygous so two on the bar two we have four so there will be four gametes that will be produced with the genotype having this thing okay sorry with uh, there will be four different types of gametes that will be produced for example now if the condition was like this a a b b and c c over here if you see there are three different type of uh, uh, gam uh, there are three different type of heterozygous condition this is heterozygous this is heterozygous this is heterozygous so 2 by 3 2 into 2 4 4 into 2 8 would have been the condition eight gametes would have been produced over here there are only two that is heterozygous which is why 2 raised to the power 2 you have 4 this is the correct answer okay going ahead in human beings multiple genes are involved in the inheritance of so in human beings multiple genes are involved in the inheritance of what sickle cell anemia skin color color blindness phenylketonuria so skin color that you see over here it's an example of polygeny what do you mean by polygeny as in you have two three two to three separate or three or more separate genes for controlling one thing that is skin color usually one gene is responsible for one trait but over here three genes or more than three genes would be responsible for one trait and skin color is the most famous example of polygeny okay so this is the answer going ahead lack of independent assortment of two genes a and b in fruit fly drosophila is due to so it's saying usually when morgan was working he found that genes also they independently assort they move uh um, okay when mendel was working he found that basically what happens genes for example this is a chromosome this is a chromosome a and b a does not have to do anything to do with b so a can go with b or it can go with another allele small b they won't almost always be united it's not like that okay that was law of independent assortment basically they can independently assort of each other whoever the combination is a can go with this a can go with this also similarly a can go with this a can go with this as well but morgan studied something and according to his study he came to know that there could be conditions where the genes might not be located on different chromosome instead they can be located on the same chromosome and they can be located in this way that they are so close that they are so close that even recombination cannot make them apart what do you mean by recombination when basically the condition if it was like this a is here and b is here in that particular case what would happen probably there are chances that this part of the chromosome got cut and got here and came here and this part of the chromosome came here in this case the b would have switched to that side and a would have been here okay that was one thing but if someone is not able to do independent assortment here law of independent assortment is fine it's happening but over here do you think independent assortment can happen if they are too close it cannot independently move around they will be always close this closeness is known as children linkage this closeness is known as linkage so please lack of independent assortment of two genes a and b in fruit to fly drosophila is due to linkage they are closely linked if they are in this particular position you call them loosely linked but these are tightly linked genes and they do not show much amount of recombination okay question number 18 came in 2004 going ahead the frequency of recombination between gene present on the same chromosome as a measure of distance between genes was explained by so as i said if the genes are located very close okay this shows that there is close linkage and close linkage means there is less recombination recombination as an exchange of things that you saw over here and then new combinations could come in okay now on the other hand if they are 
loosely linked instead of closely linked they are loosely linked in that case it will be high amount of recombination now from here things can go to the next one okay it can get exchanged very easily now this was said by whom the frequency of recombination between gene present on the same chromosome as a measure of distance between genes was explained by alfred stuart to wend who was the student of morgan children this came in neat 2019 okay going ahead with the 20th question what map unit senti morgan is adopted in the construction of genetic maps okay a unit of distance between genes on chromosome representing 50% crossover that is the highest crossover so highest uh, recombination so one map unit i'll tell you without solving the whole thing one map unit is basically naming one person crossover so if this is this it just has one person crossover if this is there and b is over here it might have 50% crossover so a map unit that is senti morgan morgan from the scientist who was able to find linkage and recombination okay a map what map unit is adopted in the construction of genetic map children a unit of distance between genes on chromosome representing 1% crossover this is the least this is one map unit and then goes on things okay so it is just one person crossover that is been represented by one map unit a single map unit or senti morgan cool going ahead the term linkage was coined by the term linkage as i just said now it was coined by morgan his student alfred was working on the recombination frequency and stuff like that gene mapping that is something different but he was the person who found he coined the term linkage 2015 question going ahead abo blood group system is due to multi factor inheritance hmm? incomplete dominance no multiple allelism epistasis it is multiple allelism as in it's saying a b and o blood group have multiple allele children one allele is i a the other is i b and the other is i or basically i o so one two three alleles are responsible for blood group which is why i say it shows multiple allelism okay and in id questions a very easy question going ahead 23rd capitular capitular antirrhinum or snapdragon is crossed with white okay offsprings r w are pink this is an example of what so basically it's small w small w i am saying capitular capitular is crossed with this okay now over here offsprings were pink so whatever you do the cross would be like this so usually what happens if this was completely dominant if capitular capitular was red and this was white and if r was completely dominant over this then probably this should have been red but it's not red all of them instead are pink in color why is this happening because this is not completely dominant over the recessive one this is incompletely dominant it shows in complete dominance children it shows what in complete dominance as you can see over here okay going ahead test cross involves what test cross involves crossing between two genotypes with dominant trait crossing between two genotypes with recessive trait crossing between two f1 hybrids crossing the f1 hybrid with double recessive genotype okay what is the answer for this basically okay over here you have capital t and you have capital t small t both of them they are tall but i want to find whether it is homozygous tall or it is heterozygous tall so what do i do if i try to fuse it with one other tall all of them again will be tall because capital t whenever it's there it will be giving rise to tall only instead okay if i cross suppose i am doubtful about this so i cross this with a recessive parent with a recessive parent over here i get capital t small t 
I get capital T small t, I get small t small t and then again I get small t small t. So half of them will be dwarf children and half of them will be what? Tall. Whereas if the genotype was like this, then when I cross all of them again will be giving me capital T, capital T, capital T, small t, capital T, small t, capital T, small t and capital T, small t. All of them would have been tall because there is one to dominate over them. So to find this out, I do the test cross. Now, what do you mean by test cross? How can you find it? Crossing between two genotypes with dominant trait? No. Cross, crossing between two geno genotypes with recessive trait? Crossing between two F1 hybrids? No. Crossing the F1 hybrid with a double recessive genotype? Yes. Crossing the F1. This is the F1 hybrid that we get. Okay. And you are crossing this with double recessive genotype. So this is the correct answer for your question. Okay. Then when dominant and recessive alleles express itself together, it is known as what children? When both of these alleles are going to express itself together. What do you call it? You call it codominance. Simple. Okay. You call it codominance. Both of them are expressing themselves. This is a 2001 question. Going ahead. Which idea is depicted by a cross in which F1 generation resembles both the parents? Which idea is depicted by a cross in which F1 generation resembles both the parents' children? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Inheritance of one gene, co-dominance or incomplete dominance? What is the answer for this? And then there is complete dominance as well. Try for yourself. This is 26th question. Got the answer? It will be what children? When there is both of them, they are showing their character, it will be co-dominance, co-dominance as in both of them together. So when it is resembling both their parents in some other way, you still call it co-dominance. Bit tricky, but yes, it's there. Okay. Now, 27th, F2 generation in the Mendelian cross showed that genotypic and phenotypic ratios are same as 1 is to 2 is to 1. It represents a case of Codominance, B dihybrid cross, uh, C monohybrid cross with complete dominance, monohybrid cross with incomplete dominance. This I would like to solve. So same thing I can put it over here, capital R, capital R, uh, and then small w, small w, okay? Red and white for snapdragon. So red flowers, when they were fused with white flowers, you got all of them were, okay, I'll write it. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, all of them were pink. Now, when I did self-pollination among them, so I got RW, I got RW and then RW. Okay, so over here when I fuse RR, I got other thing that I got RW, the other thing that I got was RW again and this was again WW. So over here I found them to be red, them to be pink and them to be white. So I can say 1 was red. This is the phenotypic ratio. 2 were pink and 1 was again white. This was what children? The phenotypic ratio. Okay. What about the genotypic ratio? 1 is capital R, uh, capital R, capital R. This is 1. 2 of them are capital R, small w. This is 2. And 1 is small w, small w. So again, I got genotypic ratio. The genotypic ratio is also 1 is to 2 is to 1. So over here, I'm talking about monohybrid cross because this is the monohybrid. See, there's only one trait with heterozygous condition. This is known as monohybrid. So this is monohybrid cross and they are showing incomplete dominance. So F2 generation in a Mendelian cross showed that genotypic and phenotypic ratios are 1 is to 2 is to 1. This is for them. This is your 27th question. I hope you got your answer. Now, first genetist father of genetics was Dave Rice, Mendel, Darwin, Morgan. Well, you wish it was Darwin, but it's not. He is Gregor Mendel, who is the father of genetics. Okay, easy question, right? 29. In his class of experiments on pea plants, Mendel did not use what? So, there were seven traits. 
seven traits that was used okay seed color seed shape pod color pod shape flower position flower color flower color flower position okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 there was one more i forgot seed color seed shape pod color pod shape uh, flower position and flower color okay apart from that there was one more which i obviously forgot i don't remember it somehow okay anyways so there were seven character okay now over here which was that one which he did not use seed shape was used flower position was used seed color was used pod length is not something that he used so this is the wrong one now if you know the seventh one you can also let me know in the comment section teachers are there we go we can forget things we teach a lot of things we can forget a lot of things right so yes definitely tell me the comment uh, tell me the correct uh, the seventh one over here if you remember it correctly somehow i am not able to remember i don't know why okay going ahead last question how many true breeding pea plant varieties did mendel select as pairs which were similar except in one character with contrasting taste so basically he as i said there were seven pair 1 2 3 4 5 1 6 and 7 so in total 7 plus 7 you have 14 contrasting characters that were there so this is the answer in that you have all those things you have um, green uh, what's say round axial violet flowers i for inflated flower points t for terminal and y for the color of the pot okay now still i am forgetting how can that be possible so green is the seed colors just imagine okay r is seed shape a is okay anyways leave i don't want to make you confused anyhow so there were four characters and it was total of them were 14 so basically the answer will be 14 children these are the 30 questions that you needed to so i hope that you were able to solve everything with whatever we learned yes at times i could have uh, forgot a few details but yes 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 there's too much for me to remember as well but yes you have got all the answers to be correct just check that and do let me know your marks give yourself plus four marks for all the correct answers and minus one for all the wrong answers and then once you're done with it you have to tell me your scores and if you think that this particular video was really helpful for you then do not forget to subscribe to the channel that's all children bye bye have a great day